Hello, we are here with our lovely ladies to talk about female reproductive health and promote <laughs> all of the things that come with that. <laughs> so I have Dr. Teresa Irwin, Isabel, and Myra. And if you don't know who they are, then you should be watching our previous videos. <laughs> but today we are going to talk about female anatomy and how no one really knows what all that entails. Mm -hmm. I know for sure, to me, for a long time, it was just the vagina, and that was it, <laughs> in terms of female right. anatomy. Um, so yeah, floor is open. All right, Myra, well, tell, tell them about uh, a lot of the common things you see. Okay, so common misconceptions, uh, people think that the vulva, what you see, the exterior, is the vagina. But in reality, it's the labia minora, labia majora, and then inside is the vagina. Um, and then an another misconception is the urethra, where you pee from. So why don't you tell us a little more about the anatomy? Okay. Oh my gosh, well, I forgot we have a fourth guest. <laughs> today. <laughs> yes. Lovely. So this is the female <laughs> pelvis, right? We've got the spine there. And um, so uh, we're going to start with the basics and that is what uh, Myra was alluding to. So the vulva is all of this outside portion. And she talked about the labia minora. Here you can't see the labia majora because they're the deeper structures. So it would be the outer covering here on either side. And then the vagina, I need a pen. Uh, would be this hole, <laughs> this opening um, that is inside. So you can't see the vagina unless you actually not only spread the labia apart, but put some instrumentation to, to look at it. So um, I can uh, go over some of the other things, but what are, what's something that you were curious about? Right, so I've heard you mention the pelvic floor a couple Thank of you. times. So like, what does that, is it just like the whole thing? Okay. So, that, great question. There are 42 muscles that compose the pelvic floor. Uh, so, I'm going to show you the inside. This is after the uterus and the bladder and colon have been removed. And so here, there are multiple muscles in here, several layers. Um, and basically, the pelvic floor is literally the floor of the pelvis. Okay, so there's the internal muscles, which also encompass um, all the way up to the pubic bone and all the way to the rectum. Uh, then on the outside, and these are deep layers actually, uh, to the skin. So then there's multiple muscles here. Again, there's 42, I don't wanna bore you with each one of them. So that's a great question though, that is the pelvic floor. And you'll see on many of our videos that we're gonna actually allude to pelvic floor because it is so important to keep it strong, healthy, and young. So, all right. Awesome. So why? Why is the pelvic floor specifically so important for all of that, I guess? Sure. Excellent question. I can't even turn these good questions. <laughs> anyway. I'll try to be less good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could do it. <laughs> so um, the pelvic floor is basically supporting all of our uh, organs, internal organs. It looks like it's below the organs, but above the bone. So it's that nice little like mm -hmm. nest egg. Yes. <laughs> Yes, beautiful. You can kind of also think of it as a trampoline. So it's mm -hmm. got that ability to descend and ascend, and we want to keep it in more in the ascension portion of a, of a trampoline jump. So it's important because it supports all of those organs and keeps them where they need to be. Uh, there are many risk factors that lead to problems with the pelvic floor, but the long and the short of it is, is to keep the vagina and its surrounding structures healthy. Um, it's uh, very important. We'll talk much more in detail about on a future uh, discussion, but there are, so most people think of female sexual organs as one, maybe two, for when it comes to arousal and sex. Uh, is that your understanding? Pretty much. Yeah. Like clitoris and G-spot is the most... And then the vagina is everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, the vagina, clitoris, G-spot, that's it. Oh my gosh, I remember, I don't know if it was, I think it was in high school. Uh, there was that like quiz, or not quiz, but everyone was like, how many holes do girls have? And everyone was like, <laughs> I haven't heard that one. One or two. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. 
It was a big thing when I was a you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so what's the answer then? Four. <laughs> right. So what well, are they? <laughs> if we're counting the butt, <laughs> are we counting the butt? <laughs> yeah, that, that is Definitely. part of the pelvic floor. You see, there is the anal, external anus. Yeah. Yeah, the sphincters. <laughs> so we got, so we'll dive into that. Okay, we'll start from the bottom up. How's that? Yeah. Okay, so again, that's the anal opening. We have the internal anal sphincter, the external anal, anal sphincter. But we're going to go to, there's actually seven sexual organs for arousal in women. Do you believe that? Isn't that awesome? Ha, huh, guys. <laughs> and they're all the juice fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Okay. Stay so, tuned. <laughs> so this is the perineal sponge. We call it the perineum when the skin is overlying it. So it's the area between the vaginal opening, the most uh, lower portion, and then the top of the anal uh, opening. And um, uh, this is, uh, an important muscle and, and does get a, does have erectile tissue so it becomes swollen and is important in uh, sexual activity and arousal. Then uh, we have, let's see if you can see, these are the vestibular bulbs. It's only on this side here. Um, and, and it's kind of, it's not the same as, but it can be similar to men's um, balls or testicles. <laughs> and these two do tend to get engorged uh, uh, in sexual arousal and they actually attach to the clitoris. Um, so it's, it's part of that whole erectile system. Mm -hmm. Then we have the uh, bulbo, uh vestibular glands that are on either side of the lower part of the vagina. Also very, very important in, in producing secretions for, um, for sex and sexual arousal. We have now, you cannot see it here, but there are two small glands that are on either side of the urethra. They're called skein glands. And they, they produce, get this, PSA. What do we all know PSA is? Do you, do you know what PSA is? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job in the office and teaching her. Okay, You're well, fired. <laughs> but in her defense, honestly, it's because it's a male term usually. It's prostatic specific antigen. So that it's actually found in female secretions that are produced by the skein glands. So it's okay. I actually really didn't teach you that one. That was a trick question, but you know. Okay. <laughs> Next time you'll know it, though, won't you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Then we have the um, what's called the urethral sponge. You're not going to see it on this model because the urethra is our P tube. It's about four centimeters long in women, and uh, at the end of it is the opening, the urethral opening or orifice. And uh, underneath it, the undersurface that goes along the entire vagina is called the urethral sponge. And that has a lot of um, erectile uh, blood vessels. And it does get engorged and enlarged when uh, women become sexually aroused. And that's, that's kind of what people have traditionally thought of as the G-spot, but there's not a G-spot, it's actually an area. And so the way that you can best feel the area is if you push on the urethral sponge, you'll feel like you need to pee. And although that may not seem like you're gonna be aroused with that, if it's, if it's touched appropriately, then it will be. Um, so then we have the clitoris, the famous clitoris, right? So there, that is a, actually a very large sexual organ. It's got the most blood vessels for e uh, erection in women. Um, so we have the glands or the head of the, the uh, clitoris. And it's the homolog, that means that's the comparable to the male penis. And then we have the shaft, and then we have the legs. So it's uh, actually about seven centimeters uh, in length. <laughs> Get that, guys? Yeah, seven <laughs> centimeters. Anyway, we don't so... need to pull out a ruler for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take your really? word for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, did I cover seven? Sponge. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Any questions you cool. have? Isn't that pretty cool? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the next thing is you need to teach people how to properly touch it. <laughs> yes. That's I'll not have this type to, of video. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to. That's what uh, I do for you too. I'll, I'll leave that to the sex therapist. Anyway. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the proper the proper information on the internet. We can we can post those actually in, in uh, links in our links. Yeah. All right.
Okay, well, I think that's a lot of information. <laughs> I'm gonna need to memorize that or watch this video again. But um, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to like and comment in the area below. We would love to hear what you all have to say. All right, all right until next time. Yay. Woo! I'm always delayed. <laughs> <laughs> always surprised that the end is coming. <laughs> There's no hint in there at all. <laughs> no. Comment, oh, like us, share. Yeah, Concern. <laughs> what is the surprise? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>